Welcome to the grand finale, the finals of the 2024 World Crokinole Championship. It's all boiled down to these two combatants. On your left, we have Connor Ryman. On your right, we have Josh Carfiello. Getting right into the action here. Josh comes up a little bit short, very uncharacteristic of him. He is a machine with the 20s. Ryman makes him pay for that, going up 120 to 0 with the hammer. Unable to convert on that second shortcoming of uh, Carfiello. If I had had to bet, I would have said that this would start out with a tremendous 20 battle. Both of these players just absolute machines when it comes to dropping those centers. Ryman also quite proficient at playing the defensive game. As you see, he's left uh, Josh in a very tricky position here. Josh pushing for that follow through 20. Ryman makes some pay, goes up two nothing with the hammer. He's in a commanding lead of this first round. If you didn't watch the semifinals, I'm not sure what's wrong with you. Uh, but just in case you didn't watch that, I will let you know. Nice 20 by Josh. He's uh, still in a tough position here. But the way this works is it is the best two out of three games. Each game is a race to five points. Maybe I wrote Josh off too quick. If he had uh, if he had drained that 20, he'd be in a pretty good position here. Or at least, uh, at least in the battle. Right now, inconsequential as Connor Ryman takes the first two points in this race to five in the first game of the race to two out of three games. If you followed all that, if not, just keep watching. You'll figure it out. Ryman first to act in this round two. Josh overcorrects a little, comes up long on that 20. There's Ryman, fantastic defensive play, leaving that disc well back on his side, not giving Carfiello much to work with. Ooh, Ryman, you can see, unhappy with that uh, offering there. He was trying to keep that back away from the center hole. I think there's a 20 here for Josh, but he definitely wants the off. He does not want to leave that red disc on the board. Oh, that was so close. Again, Ryman back to defense, but he feels he may have left an opportunity here for Josh. And he did. Josh unable to secure the off, but he did get that 20, forcing Ryman off to one side or the other for his next undaunted. He drains another 20. So Ryman up a 20, but against the hammer. Playing good defensive positional play here. Oh, spoke too soon. Josh utilizing that peg. I see comments online. No way he did that on purpose. I guarantee you he did. Josh with the final shot. All he needs to do is secure the off. He gets it, knots up this first game. Two points each. World Crokinole Championship in Tavistock always draws people from all over, but this year was particularly uh, successful in that department. I believe that there were people representing 16 different states in several different countries. I'm just looking at all the all the people in the background here, the gallery, you could say, who uh, come from a long way off to watch, uh, to play, and now to watch. Now, nah, this is more what I expected, a 20s battle here. Look in the background, you get uh, Jason Beerling, a local guy, but if you've watched any amount of Crokinole Center, Crokinole coverage, you're very familiar with that man. Some others we have uh, coming across here. We got Helen and Brian representing Vermont. You got Magic Mike from the Extra Pint Crokinole Club in New York as Josh is the first to come up short. Ryman makes him pay, goes up 6-5. Oh, that could be costly. Ryman up a 20. Also, hammer advantage. Josh pushing for it. Needed it to put any sort of pressure on Ryman. Ryman just uh, practicing the touch 20. Going up 4-2 to two in this race to 5. So someone's going to win this first game. Then the players will switch sides. Have a bit of warm-up time. 
Yeah, also in the background there, we have Ron Langell. I can see Mark Ponzio, who traveled here from Brooklyn. Incredible ambassador of the game. Moving along there, we got uh, some of the people from further away. You got Chet and Aaron, also from the Extra Pint Crokinole Club. Ben Harding traveled all the way from South Carolina. Michael Barth didn't travel quite as far, but still pretty cool. Made the trip. Came up here by Hobos looking for a place to stay. Fortunately, we, uh, <laughs> we, we secured them accommodations. Ryman is up 2-1 in this 20s race. Goes through his own to get the off. I'm sure there's other people in the background there. If you're there and I forgot you, I do apologize. Great shot by Carfiello. He secures two off and also leaves himself in a pretty decent position. A tough shot for Ryman. Josh definitely going to be hunting for the off in the 20. Ah, also spotting Todd Henderson from Kansas City. Candace and Rob representing the Woeful Nova Scotia Club. <laughs> Here, Ryman doing commentary for me. <laughs> he said that was a great miss. Josh with one, uh, his black disc that's on the board is sitting on that 10-15 line, so it's 10 points. If he hit, simply does a hit and stick, he's tied. He's, I think what he's looking at here, he wants to go through his own, so he needs to push his shooter into the 15. Yeah, he got the shooter into the 15, but he needed to hit and stick with the one that he pushed in order to tie the round. Very creative, just wasn't quite able to execute a, a uh, extremely challenging, challenging shot. I say here's the players switching sides, rhyming up one game to zero in this uh, best two out of three games. Players practicing their 20s. It's up to them to decide when they're ready. Looks like we're off. Ryman first to act. Ryman first to come up short. See if Josh is able to battle back here after losing that first game. Mm, not quite what he wanted. I am very sure of that. But uh, pretty good positioning nonetheless. Great positioning here. Josh content to play on the outside, given that he has the hammer. As Roy Campbell would say, make him do the heavy lifting. Meaning it's Ryman who's going to want to play back in the middle. And Josh is quite content to play on the outside. Mm. Let's see, has he given Ryman an opportunity to get in for a 20? Oh, Ryman chooses the double instead and forces Josh to shoot through the pegs. Interesting. Now he carves himself in there. Just on the edge of the house, but giving himself something to work with. Now he may have an opportunity for a follow through 20. Running out of bullets here. Two shots left each. Oh, pushes for that 20. So close. And he's left Josh a fantastic opportunity, which he is unable to capitalize on. Now Ryman with the opportunity. Oh, him unable to convert. Wow. All Josh needed to secure the two points was a takeout, and he gets it. Josh coming up short. I don't know if there's some finals jitters going on here. He's, uh, like I say, he is normally just an absolute machine with those. There it is. That's what we're used to seeing out of him. Ryman says, yeah, I can do that too. Oh, <laughs> wiped its feet on the way in. Four, four in the 20 count here. Ryman with the hammer, five, five now. Josh can do nothing but wait for a miss out of Connor. 
Ooh. Tough. That, uh, yeah. Okay. He's still, uh, he needs an off and a 20 to force Ryman to sh take his last shot. Ryman doesn't even need to shoot, but he does anyway. Securing the first two points in game number two. Ryman was the first to miss, so now it's uh, Josh who gets to play possum. He may have wanted to pull that back. Let's see if Ryman's able to utilize the peg. He used it, but just a titch off as it came back past that 20 hole. Oh, look at that follow through 20. We're going to get to see that again at the end of this round. That was a fantastic shot. Carfiello just lips out. That could prove costly here. Ryman makes him pay for that. Goes up 3-1 to one in the 20s cup, putting a lot of pressure on Josh. Now Ryman comes up short. Josh has the opportunity to draw this even in the 20 cup and then leave each player with one shot left each. Not easy, but it is there to get the off in the 20. He gets it. Great shot by Carfiello. Ryman puts the pressure right back on Josh. If Josh secures this 20, tied the round. I knew we'd see it again. Well done, Garrett, on the editing. Great shot by Josh, so critical at that point. Here we have three points each. Even in the match, even in this game, but uh, Ryman being up one game, there's a lot of pressure on Josh. Right here is an opportunity for him to step on the gas. Great push 20. Wouldn't quite call that a follow through, but it uh, needed a little extra oomph on it. It was a heavy hanger. A lot of pressure on Ryman here as he's on the wrong side of the 20s race. Oh, gets the mistake he was looking for. Is he able to capitalize on this? Didn't quite get that, uh, didn't quite get that 20. Not in a terrible position. He's down a 20, but he does have hammer. At some point he needs to push for something. He pushed, he's pushing for it again. Ryman takes this round in this game. He will be your 2024 World Coconut Champion. If Josh Carfiello takes this game, takes this round, he will force a game three. Oh, nasty follow through. Huge shot. A lot of pressure on Josh right here. To stay in this match, he needs this 20. And it lips out so costly. Here's Ryman taking an extra second. He knows what this means. He needs this shot. He needs, just needs to secure the off. He yes. gets it. Whew. Finally lets out the pressure of an incredible day of Pocono, facing the best of the best from all over the world in order to be crowned yet again the World Pocono Champion. Thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you come back and watch some more, and I hope you find your way to Tavistock next year for the 2025 World Pocono Championships. And most importantly, I hope that you make it a great day. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, you can't.